Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Super Snipers by Gallons Games. This is a one to two player game that takes 20 to 30 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Super Snipers, you are attempting to locate and find your opponent among multiple locations as you track them down and snipe them out. Beware though, there are innocents uh, in the location that you will have to try and avoid, and your opponent will be doing the same to you as well. It's kind of like a battleship slash polynomial style game where you're placing these polynomials onto a grid, trying to cover up and segregate the uh, enemy unit from all the rest of the innocents and, and from the outside remaining of the board, and then placing your bullet marker on them, and if you can do that, you will defeat them. But the game isn't over. You have to do it three times, and the game gets more challenging as it goes along, as you get better and better, and your opponent, if they are behind, will start playing catch-up mechanics. There is your own unique character and character abilities, as well as three unique locations and multiple characters to choose from. Two variants of the game, one turn-by-turn -turn mode, and the other is going to be utilizing this timer that's going to kind of give it more of a fast-paced, speedy-style game, and that's pretty much how it works. Let's talk about the setup for the game, how to play, and of course my review. To begin set up for the game, each player is going to get their own unique player board. It's going to be a board that you put together and it's going to form a grid. On the grid, you're also going to have certain spots to place little markers. There's a tactical advantage marker, you're gonna have an exchange, concentrate, move, and two recalibrate markers. Make sure that they're face down and that you've chosen a color, black or white. Go ahead and give yourself three innocent tokens as well as the marker for your enemy and then three locations. You're also going to be taking three additional locations that you will be utilizing that are kind of like markers for your grid and you can set them aside as well. Choose your character and your character's adrenaline power as well as three bullets and place them off to the side. Take your ready marker and place it next to your player boards as well as of course the timer if you're using it. The last thing that you'll do is you'll mix up the different polynomial tiles, make sure that there's an even amount between each bags and shuffle them up and place them in the bag. After you've done that, the game is ready to begin. Playing the game Super Snipers is quite simple. The first thing you'll do is you'll take your three hiding cards and you're going to choose which one of them is the target and where it's going to be located between the three locations. You'll place them down secretly, but you'll know where they are among the three different choices. There are three locations. You're going to have the Watchtower, Factory, and Carnival, or you're going to have the High Rise, the Commercial District, and the Beach. Each of the locations has a number on them, and the higher the number, the more difficult it's going to be for your opponent to find you, track you, and eliminate you. Place your hidden markers down, two of them are misses and one of them is where you're at, and then your opponent will do the same thing. Then, if you're playing the hourglass mode, go ahead and flip the ready to go and flip the hourglass timer. As the hourglass timer goes, you're going to be able to take an action. When the hourglass timer finishes, when it's all the way down to the bottom, which is after about 10 seconds, you'll be able to reflip it and take another action. This can allow you to get a little faster, a little faster pace than your opponent, but still limits you from being able to place too quickly. On your turn, you're going to take out, begin the game, three of these markers here, and you're gonna place them in a row along the line of sight. These are gonna be the markers that you're going to be utilizing on your main grid and on the smaller locations. Now, before you can use your main grid, you're gonna to have to snip out and find your opponent. And you're gonna be placing these down. When you place a marker to begin with, each color is going to have to start from the outside of the board. And you're going to need to cover the polynomials on the outside and they can kind of go in. And your objective is to place them so that you're going to be able to uh, surround the target marker without any outside uh, spaces being able to connect to that marker in any way. Whenever you take one polynomial out, you will then move the others to the left and place a new one down. And once again, rinse and repeat. You'll take another tile. If it's the same tile as one that's already been placed, so if you've already placed a purple one, you are going to need to chain that tile. You are going to need to place it adjacent to the space you previously placed any of those other tiles to make a chain. If it is a different color, however, you will be able to form a new chain and place it down. And then once again, you'll move these guys over. You're gonna flip over your timer and you'll go and start again. So this is gonna be flipped. And that means that you're going to have another turn and you're going to be able to select the next one in order and place it. And in this case, this is a purple one. So it must be connected to a previously placed purple one. And bam, there you go. Move these guys down, take out another one. The same timer is over. And once again, draw one of these guys and flip the timer. And you can go ahead and place, but you have to place based on 
where it has it needs to be chained. And if you can't see, if you can't see, I'll make sure there's something in the B-roll that is going to form a space around your targeting marker to indicate that you have found the suspect's hiding location. And during the same turn, you'll flip that over and find out if you've located the target. And in this case, I have. However, if I were to have flipped one over, maybe let's go ahead and say this was over here, it would have been a miss. I would have to go to a different location and flip over a new one after uncovering the location and see if I've targeted my, or found my target. When you find your target, you will then take the corresponding player board. So in this case, I found the factory. He's at the factory number two. So I'm gonna take number two and place it down into my grid. And the same rules will apply. You'll push these guys over and you're going to pull out another polynomial and you're going to, once again, flip, take one, and place, and follow the same rules. If it's a starting color, it must be placed on the outskirts, otherwise it has to be connected with the same color to form a chain, and bam, you'd place it down. The unique thing about this one, though, is whenever you see innocence on the board, you'll need to do the same thing you did on the targeting location with the innocence, protecting them from the other sniper, so you'll need to cover them up. And additionally, you're going to need to block the sniper's location, your opponent, from the, uh, from the outside of the grid, but as well as you're gonna to need to make sure that there's a two by two, so to speak, L piece that can be placed on them when you have blocked them off. Now, speaking of placement, and you already understand how placement works, but there is going to be abilities in the game. Sometimes you're going to have a unique ability with your character, like for instance, mind control. This player can start a new chain next to an innocent, but only once every target phase. And there are adrenaline cards as well. These will activate and I'll explain those later. Uh, but there's also abilities that you'll get throughout the game. Whenever you cover a marker location on either these locations where you're looking for the enemy or whenever you found the enemy and you're trying to cover them up, you're going to flip these markers over. And there are different things that they can happen. So for instance, one can be the uh, exchange. Whenever you get this, you'll flip this over, take one of these guys from the bag and place it down next to the area. And you can always exchange this for one of the polynomials in your line of sight. So you'll place it and you'll flip it. And you'll, and you'll be able to use this one as opposed to the one that's currently there, which is pretty nice. And when you do do that, you'll flip this over, saying that you can no longer do that. Uh, you have the concentrate. This will allow you to create a new chain with a color that's already been on the board. There is the move marker, which will let you steal one of your opponent's uh, markers uh, from their line of sight or move one of yours on your grid. And then you have the tactical advantage. This will let you swap pieces. And then there is also surveillance, which you'll get at the very beginning of the game when you place the correct colors on the correct markers on the locations. When you get these surveillance markers, you can instantly place them on your grid when the um, target location has been found. And so it's kind of like a bonus that you'll get in the game. Once you've covered up your opponent's space and protected the innocence, then the uh, marker needs to be placed with the bullet and you will win the round if you're the first person to do that. If you do, the one of the uh, locations is going to be removed, making it more challenging for you and easier for your opponent. So you'd move those, lose one of those locations and you would rinse and, rinse and repeat the same setup as well. And your opponent would flip over, if they were the one who lost, their adrenaline, allowing them to utilize this marker, which kind of gives them a bonus effect of placing wherever they want when they need to, as well as a new bonus ability. Once you lose, if you do, you'll do the exact same thing. And each location is going to go away every round up to the point where there's only one location left. And if you can defeat your opponent by placing three bullets on their side of the field, because you'll place one for each time you win, then you're going to win the game Super Snipers, a dexterity-based polynomial-style game with some unique twists and turns. Let's talk about what I think about it. So Super Snipers is a dexterity game at its core. It has a unique chaining mechanic where you're placing Tetris pieces of the same color and attaching them together to try and isolate certain spaces on a grid, isolating spaces to either A, find your opponent, target their location, place it on their grid, and then isolate them once again, placing your bullet marker on them when they have been fully, fully uh, surrounded to defeat them and rinsing repeating that three times repeating them three times and the game gets progressively easier for the person who is losing meaning they get bonuses and it makes it easier for them finding locations they're going to get their adrenaline piece as well as their adrenaline ability and of course there's two different variants of play there's the turn by turn mode and then you're going to have this hourglass marker this is my favorite way to play it makes the game a little bit more intense and nerve-wracking you can start losing turns as you're slowly placing 
missing pieces, but it's not going to be to the point where a player is going to massively get a heads up on you. And if they make bad placements but move quickly, then you can win by making precise placements correctly and securing the victory a lot quicker. There's all these abilities in the game that are going to help you along the way as well, flipping these over and utilizing them, whether it be moving pieces, taking a tactical advantage, swapping with exchange, utilizing your surveillance when you found your target, or recalibrating, just simply removing pieces off of the grid. And there's ways that's going to help you and benefit you as you place pieces down that you do not mean or mistakenly place down. Another thing to note too with this game too is you have different characters or different players that you can play with. Some of them are going to give you your bonus abilities before you start the target phase, this phase in which you're trying to locate them. Um, and other times you're going to be getting these guys when you lose the ability for adrenaline, which is really nice as well. Um, another thing to note too is there is a solo player variant to the game with unique solo player cards. I'm not a huge solo player fan, especially in a game like this where it's like a dexterity based game. I like the one on one combat. Um, so I prefer this mode for sure. And I also really like the idea of how you place down these polynomials. I think it's really, really unique. It's a system I haven't seen before. The artwork in the game is solid, really, really well done, and the quality of components is nice. This is, of course, a uh, non, <laughs> this is a sample product. It's going to be roughly changed. There's quite a few notes detailing what's going to be changed in the game, but I just highly suggest you check out the Kickstarter to see what that's going to be like. But what's here and how it's made is actually really, really nice and really easy to understand. Once you gather the understanding of how chains work and how you're trying to like separate the specific locations and markers, you're gonna get a handle on it. There's also these innocent markers that you can place on the board, as well as your target marker that you can place as well. I found that to be a little finicky and not really, there's no really point to doing that in my opinion, so I didn't really use them all that much, but it's, it's kind of marks off the areas you need to go to. Um, whatever, that's fine either way. Uh, the fact that these guys are, the boards are double thick, I like that uh, aspect to the game, and it's easy to place certain things into the grid. You feel like you're moving quite fast, all, all really well and fine. Uh, the game is a little mechanical though. You're constantly flipping and swapping and removing and placing. So if you're not really into these mechanical games where you're like this and this and this and this and this, then it's probably not going to be the game for you because that happens quite a bit in this game and you have to follow a certain structure as the game moves on. There's also this turn by turn play where you do get to outspeed your opponent, but at a certain pace, providing, providing them with a benefit of being able to kind of not catch up, but not get too far behind. And I do really like that, especially when it comes down to players who are a little bit slower than other players. And the idea of having to choose between the different locations that you can hide at. You can choose the harder location, but that's going to get removed um, and make the game more challenging for you if you win. So placing it on an easier location, if you think you're a better player, might be a better idea just in case that if you do lose, you'll still have the two better locations in which you can hide at. And so there's all this kind of choice that you're going to be making. But in general, this is more of a solitaire style game. There's not a whole lot of things you can do to your opponent. You're basically going to hide in one of the locations and then your objective is to outspeed your opponent by making sure you follow all the mission objectives. But just so that you're aware, like player interaction is kind of limited. You're just listening to whenever they use an ability as well as whether they found you or not. You can look at their board to see how far they've progressed and whether or not you need to take any hmm, preemptive like <laughs> decisions or strikes that you normally wouldn't probably make to try and secure a victory. This is a really cute game. It's a really, really, really well done game and it's a really mechanical game. And if you like that style of play with a dexterity polynomial twist to it, then Super Snipers is definitely for you. I enjoyed playing this one. This one has a unique twist to it. It has lots of different variations that I enjoy as well and with unique characters too. This is definitely one of those games that my friends Josh and Max would play over and over and over again because they love that twisted like uh, competitive nature of the game but they're kind of on their own messing with things and watching their other player it's kind of like a spy v spy type of mad tv series thing going on here and for that reason this game is a really solid one if you're interested in picking up there's a link down below in the description super snipers thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review for the game super snipers if you're interested in picking this game up there's a link like i said before in the description you can also go ahead and like comment subscribe on this channel it greatly helps us out we do greatly appreciate it to see more games just like this one so that you can decide whether or not you want to back them you can also go and check our website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways all that good stuff and our live stream which is every wednesday and sunday at 6 30 p.m pst where we play games literally just like this one every week with a big crew of people it's a lot of fun all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to targeting your location finding you and eliminating you next time <laughs>